Hi everyone, I'm Javier Alonso Mora and I'm an associate professor at the Delft University of Technology where I head the Autonomous Multi-Robots Lab. It's a pleasure to be uh, talking uh, in this workshop today. It's really a pity that we cannot meet in person, but uh, it, if you have any questions, you can send me an email afterwards. Uh, okay, so I will be talking about uh, today about multi-robot uh, motion planning uh, and, and coordination for object transport in dynamic environments. So environments that are shared with humans. Probably most of you have seen these robots already. Uh, thousands of them automate warehouses from Amazon and they are capable of carrying shelves around the warehouse. But if you look closely, there are no humans in the environment and other multi-robot deployments uh, that are commercially available also are in environments that are not shared with humans. If we look at the uh, self-driving cars or social robots, these typically operate in low complexity environments or at low speeds indoors. Notably, there are several challenges or limitations that we still find on autonomous robots and multi-robot systems. In particular, they cannot handle complex tasks. They, they, there is very little manipulation uh, in there. So like the warehouse robots that I just showed, there was no manipulation. And robots will also need to uh, seamlessly cooperate with each other as well as with humans and to do that in a, in a safe, efficient and reliable manner. So our goal is to have uh, robots that can seamlessly cooperate uh, with other robots and humans in, in uh, complex environments doing complex tasks such as manipulation of objects. In particular, we uh, tackle uh, three problems of multi-robot systems. The first one is how to manage a, a fleet of uh, hundreds or thousands of robots. The second one is how can these robots uh, safely navigate in a dynamic environment among humans. And the third one is how could they do a task together. So today I will be talking about these two. So how to move safely and how to do a task together while carrying an object that might be deformable. So the overview for the talk today is as follows. So I will start uh, with an uh, overview of our uh, work uh, through the past few years on uh, multi-robot object transport, starting with the uh, uh, distributed optimization method where communication was not required and following on with uh, centralized and distributed optimization with communication. Then I will finalize with a method for uh, MAV payload transport, where we relied on the constraint optimization as well, so uh, model predictive control in particular. And uh, there are many other groups uh, around the world that uh, have uh, successfully worked on multi-robot object transport. Here you have uh, four examples. Our focus uh, uh, in my group and in this talk is on optimization-based approaches and the dynamic environment. So when the robots have to coordinate to avoid the humans that are also in the environment. Okay, so let's get started uh, with the first part, so multi-robot object transport. So the first approach that we did around five years ago uh, was for uh, deformable objects. And there we, we assume that we have a team of mobile manipulators and we model them as uh, circles. So back at that time, that was still required in, in this method that I'm showing now. And then we consider a deformable object uh, where we had, uh, and the way we uh, consider the deformable object was by doing a triangulation. And for every edge of this triangulation, we consider a minimum and a maximum distance that the robots could be on that edge. Those were the limits that we will have uh, uh, for the deformation of the object. Then to solve it, uh, we formulate a convex optimization in velocity space, where we will compute a new velocity for the robot and uh, uh, assuming that that velocity will stay constant for a, a time horizon. And we recompute this optimization many times per second. And this uh, optimization is subject to a set of constraints. So one type of constraints was to satisfy the limits of the object that, we, that the robots are manipulating. 
So in particular, we needed to impose that the distance between uh, two robots on an edge of the triangulation stays uh, larger than a minimum distance uh, this uh, uh, here, this one here, and uh, also lower than a maximum distance, uh, uh, this one here. This imposes two types of constraints. So for the first one, the minimum distance, it's a cone that is uh, similar uh, to a velocity obstacle. So this will be in gray, the velocities for the robot that will lead to a collision or that will lead to the, the robots coming closer than this minimum distance that they can be in the object. And that one is a non-convex constraint because we want the robot to be in the white space. So we want the, the velocity to be in the white space uh, so that the distance is greater than this minimum distance. Then the other constraint is the, the maximum distance. So that one is an easier one. So that one is just a quadratic constraint that the velocity has to be uh, within this uh, quadratic constraint. And now we will stack uh, all these constraints for every edge of the object and every pair of robots. And uh, since it's non-convex, we will have to uh, convexify it. And we do that by linearizing it. And once we put uh, together all these constraints, then we have a convex optimization problem that we can uh, solve efficiently. Uh, here you see an example from, from of the method running with uh, three mobile manipulators while they carry deformable objects uh, like before the, the, the sheet or now a, a towel. Uh, you can observe that uh, it does work. So the robots were able to navigate in the environment, avoid collisions with both the person and these static obstacles, and respect the limits on the distance of the uh, edges, so uh, the, how much we can stretch these objects. Uh, but the method also had some limitations. So the method assumed a constant velocity throughout the time horizon. And that was okay because we were recomputing uh, very frequently, so uh, se uh, several times per second. But on the other hand, it reduces the feasible speed of the robots and it's overly uh, conservative because at the planning step, we are assuming that that velocity is going to stay constant throughout the whole time horizon, even if in practice that will not happen. And also the method was very local, so there was no reasoning of the topology. And this was okay for simple situations, uh, like the ones shown in the videos, but disagreements could also happen. For example, here, if we have these two robots carrying the object, and there is an obstacle in the way, it could happen that one robot wants to go on one side, while the other robot wants to go on the other side. And in the optimization, this will lead to, to a deadlock where both robots will stop in front of the object. Okay. Uh, so how do we solve that problem? So the way we did that is by um, saying, okay, we have uh, uh, going into a centralized uh, approach where now all the robots together uh, can coordinate and in that way uh, agree really on, on how to move safely in the environment. So the goal again was to navigate uh, uh, the formation of robots from a start goal to a goal, uh, from a start to a goal configuration in an environment where there might be static and uh, moving obstacles. And uh, here what we say is that uh, we, we can reconfigure the, the formation uh, of, of the robots, uh, robot team, by optimizing those degrees of freedom. So for instance, in this case of three uh, mobile manipulators carrying an object, we could optimize for the position and orientation of the object, as well as the orientation of every robot around the grasping point and the arm length uh, uh, at which, with which it's grasping uh, this object. So that will be our uh, optimization variable, uh, uh, all these uh, degrees of freedom of the uh, joint formation of all the robots. And we will then optimize for them, and we will also rely on the concept of uh, convex shapes, like the one you see here in free space, uh, this blue region that uh, uh, models uh, the, the locally the free space around the robots. So the first thing that we had to do is uh, if we want to navigate from a start to a goal, uh, we need a global path planning. So we need to, to know how the robots should navigate in this static environment uh, through uh, narrow openings as well. So, the, so for that, we uh, develop a sampling-based approach where we randomly sample uh, convex regions in free space. So here in this example, in dark in gray, 
are the obstacles. And in blue, these are uh, uh, regions that we have sampled. So here we have three regions, one in the start, one in the goal, and one convex region that connects uh, the two. So we will sample uh, convex regions. And then if, uh, when there is an intersection between two regions, we will say that those two regions are connected if a valid formation, so a feasible formation, exists at, within that intersection. So like in this example, for example, the intersection of this region with this region is this uh, darker blue area. And there we can optimize for the formation of the three robots carrying the object uh, to this one here. So it's feasible. The robots can could now go from here to that one, and from that one to that one, and from that one to that one, and uh, safely then uh, do the maneuver from the start to the goal. Uh, so the result uh, will be a graph of traversable regions and valid formations. And this can be very large if the environment is very large with many of the obstacles. And then uh, given this graph, uh, we can do graph search to find the shortest path. So that will give us a global path the, given the static obstacles that we can use for guidance in the environment. Since we are interested in dynamic environments shared with humans, we also need to adapt to the environment in real time. The way we do that is by uh, first computing uh, every time step, uh, we will uh, look at the environment, uh, trying to follow this reference path. And we will, the robots first will, will compute uh, a convex region in free space around the robots, like this one in blue that you see here. And to do that, we relied on, on a two-step iterative optimization uh, method called IRIS. Uh, you see here an example of it, where iteratively uh, we compute a uh, larger and larger uh, uh, convex region, uh, convex polygon or polytop in the free space. Then, given that uh, convex region, uh, we formulate a non-convex optimization problem where we minimize a cost function. This could be the, the distance to the target formation where we want the robots to go, subject to a set of constraints. The first one and most important is this one here that imposes that the, the, all the vertices, so B uh, of set F, that would be all the vertices of all the robots and the object have to be within the convex region. So here, uh, please note that we don't require anymore to approximate the shape of the robots by a circle. Now we take the exact uh, shape of, of each robot by using this function and imposing that, uh, that the ro all the robots plus the object have to stay within the convex region at, uh, at the time step. Uh, there might be other constraints, for example, limits in the joints uh, or limits on the speeds. And we can optimize this using sequential convex programming. And once we do that, we will find the, the parameters for the uh, uh, optimal formation. And we can then, uh, the robots will then move by taking those uh, inputs. And we can repeat this again and again many times per second. You see here an example of the three robots. Uh, here they are adapting in real time the convex region to also uh, avoid the, the human that is going on the way. And you can see that one of the robots had to tuck in uh, to avoid the, the person. Now they all, those two also merge, uh, come closer together uh, and go uh, through uh, this narrow opening. Uh, once they navigate uh, through it, uh, they see the, the pedestrian. And again, they will uh, uh, adapt the region and their formation and position uh, and orientations to avoid this person. Okay, so the method worked uh, pretty well. So we can now do both uh, global uh, uh, motion planning for a team of robots carrying an object, as well as real-time uh, navigation, avoiding uh, both static and moving obstacles. Uh, thanks to this idea of computing uh, uh, convex regions in free space and optimizing for the parameters of the formation. But the method was centralized. So then we ask ourselves, could we actually uh, get similar performance, but in a distributed manner? So the answer is actually yes, but then we have to rely on, on uh, a lot of communication. Um, and the way that we can do that is, um, uh, let me here give you uh, an overview of the method. For details, uh, you can refer to, to the reference below. Um, this one we have applied for a formation of a team of drones, and that one, was um, defined by the position of, of the formation 
uh, in 3D, the size and the 3D orientation, but the method equally applies to uh, multiple robots carrying an object, since that's, that is another type of formation. So imagine that we have these two robots uh, that are navigating along the corridor and there is an obstacle in front of them. The first thing that they do is they have to communicate the position of all the other robots in the team. Then each robot individually computes a convex region in free space. It might be that uh, since they have a limited field of view, it might be that, uh, that they see different obstacles. So for example, here the, the red drone might not see the obstacle in front. So its convex region might be very large. For, on the other hand, the blue robot, the one in front, uh, sees the obstacle and its convex region will be smaller uh, to avoid that obstacle. So the next thing, since there might be a disagreement between the convex space seen by different robots, they need to agree on the intersection of all the convex regions as seen by all the robots. And that is the, the free space uh, given by what everyone can see in the environment. Given this intersection of convex regions, then the robots can proceed as before. They will uh, uh, optimize for the parameters of the formation uh, following the same non-convex optimization that I mentioned before, and then move towards it. And they keep iterating through here again and again uh, several times per second. Uh, here an example of the application with a team of four drones. And you can see that the performance is equivalent to that what we will get in uh, with a centralized system. But here, uh, the, the robots need to communicate all this information of uh, positions and convex regions uh, at every time a step. So finally, uh, I would like to, to uh, introduce a little bit uh, another work that we have done uh, more recently uh, for a single uh, drone, so single micro air vehicle, and maybe uh, transporting a payload for which we use a, a method called model predictive control or receiving horizon trajectory optimization. So here the problem was uh, we had our drone that we can control uh, uh, in 3D space uh, through forces. So it will generate some internal control forces. Then we also had a pendulum that was carried below the drone. So that's the payload that it is carrying. And that one, when it moves, it will uh, create some forces that couple both the drone with the pendulum. So this will be our system, is the, the couple, the uh, MAV payload system. And then what we uh, did for uh, real-time uh, trajectory, uh, compu for computing trajectories in real time for the system was to rely on uh, trajectory optimization uh, or model predictive control. So we have our uh, MAV payload system, uh, this one here. And imagine that uh, we have an obstacle. Since we are uh, really working in dynamic environments, shared with humans, this obstacle might be moving. In that case, the reference that uh, uh, for our drone might be invisible. So now our uh, drone uh, going to the worst the goal might uh, collide with the obstacle or the payload might collide with an obstacle. Uh, then we need to, to compute a new trajectory. There is uh, an infinite number of trajectories that uh, will avoid the obstacle. So in particular, we will formulate uh, an optimization where we minimize a cost function. So th that's this one here. So we could minimize the distance to the goal or the uh, deviation with respect to the reference or other terms such as the, 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 the level of actuation that we put into the drone. And that was subject to a set of constraints for avoiding uh, the obstacles in the environment. And this is a, a, a constraint optimization for a time horizon that we can solve efficiently with uh, uh, state-of-the-art solvers like Forces Pro. And once we apply it, uh, here you can see it uh, working in practice. So here we have our MAV carrying the, the payload. And it's uh, online, it's computing the trajectory to go through this uh, uh, window. There is nothing pre-computed here. So in real time, the drone every uh, uh, 10 times per second is computing this maneuver. And you can see in, in the slow motion that it actually has to do very aggressive maneuvers like uh, here, uh, pushing up the, the, the ball. Uh, the method is, uh, can be applied uh, therefore in dynamic environments because it's real-time trajectory optimization. Here you can see it avoiding a pedestrian 
that we model as an ellipsoid around the, the, the shape of, of the pedestrian. Um, uh, it can also avoid the, uh, it's general enough, so as long as we can model the obstacles with ellipsoids, uh, it, it will uh, compute uh, trajectories like here, uh, for example, for avoiding this moving bar. Or in environments uh, shared with humans, uh, it could be multiple humans, as you see here. Uh, And uh, finally, I would just like to, to mention that uh, we, uh, together with uh, Ahol Del Heise and several of my colleagues at uh, TU Delft, uh, uh, we just started uh, the AI for Retail Lab, where we are looking at uh, mobile manipulation in uh, dynamic environments, such as those that you will, we will face in a supermarket. And these mobile robots will have to carry both or, oper or manipulate both uh, uh, rigid and uh, uh, deformable objects. So you should expect to, to hear more from us in the future within this AI for Retail Lab uh, at TU Delft. So in summary, uh, I talked today about uh, methods for optimization methods for multi-robot uh, object transport that we apply to uh, both rigid and uh, deformable objects. And then I, I concluded with the uh, method for MAV uh, payload transport using uh, model predictive control. Uh, so I would like to thank you for your attention. You can find uh, uh, more information in our group website. And if you have any questions, uh, please send me an email. Uh, I look forward to uh, meeting you all in person uh, and discussing about uh, uh, this work. Uh, thank you very much.